We're going to get started here. Hi, everyone. Welcome Okay. back to the press conference. We are joined by uh, Bustio and Asana from 100 Thieves. We're going to start with a few pre-submitted questions first. Uh, first question goes to Bustio from IGN. What do you think about being able to choose your first opponents in playoffs? Um, yeah, being able to choose the first opponent is pretty big. I mean, you get to watch all the matches uh, for the previous week and then see who's the weakest and who matches up best against you. And then you get to pick them for the first round. And to be honest, you only need to win two series to make top three, I think, and to make the Mercedes-Benz Arena. So winning those two BO3s is like everything because like that's what you want. So being able to win that first match for sure, like 90% sure, it's very nice. Thank you. Next question also goes to you, Bustio. How do you think your team has been performing this season in terms of team synergy? Um, I mean, the first couple of months were definitely rough when it comes to team synergy. Um, but um, the last, I'd say, three months since kickoff, pretty much, we've been looking very dominant in team play. Um, I think we have a lot to work on. So in practice, we're still in practice, we're still working on it. Um, but overall, I'd say we're like probably a top three team in terms of team synergy. So as long as we keep working on that, our mechanics will carry us and then we'll be good. Awesome. Thank you. Next question also goes to you. How do you think the Viper nerfs will impact her role on maps where she was played as a secondary controller, such as Bind? Um, I don't, I mean, I think she's still going to be good. I think Viper is just broken in general. So even the nerves are not going to be, it hurts her, but it's not going to be crazy. I think on like Icebox, Breeze, even Bind, you could still play her. It's just up to the team. Um, So I don't think she's the worst, but she's definitely weaker, but you could definitely still play her. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move to remote media questions. First question from Elizabeth, the score esports. Hi, everyone. Um, I would like to know that BCJ could not think of a question in time, so this is a different one. Um, <laughs> but my question is actually for Asana, and it comes from my chat um, from someone named Defo. Um, they, I wanted to ask you, what is something that is underappreciated for you and your team that you think goes unnoticed? Just with them, a lot of, to be put this in context, a lot of talk about, you know, Bustio and, you know, the team, you know, crowd's performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what is something that you think people are not noticing? I would just say the core from last year. I feel like a lot of people judge us from like a four month stint. So, I mean, yeah, it's just like a lot of you on us as Lucio revived us when, you know, I don't feel like that. Obviously, I had confidence going into this year, regardless if we had Lucio or not. So, you know, yeah, probably just that really. All right. Best of luck, boys. Thank you. Not bad. Oh, okay. Not bad. You did great. You did great. <laughs> Thank you. Next question from Oddly VLR GG. Hi, this question is for both of you guys. Uh, we are seeing on social media, both of you guys are, you know, doing, having fun in Shanghai, you know, first time in the city, the vibes are immaculate. We're still doing the stuff you usually do. How has the team's morale after, you know, winning, winning stage one, coming as the first seed, how has it been coming into Shanghai as a boost for your confidence and out of all of the teams, which one do you want to choose out of the Swiss, Swiss stage? Let me go. Yeah, you can go. Um, I mean, yeah, the vibes are definitely, I think, at an all time high. I think um sometimes they can falter because you know we're in a competitive like esports still. So like vibes, you know, during practice or not all the time are perfect, but I mean overall we are like such a close team. It's uh, amazing. I love it. It's so fun. I'm having so much fun this year. And then picking from the Swiss stage, I'd say probably any Chinese team or G2. If G2 make it out, I think our team is so confident against them that like we like we actually cannot lose to them, even if we played them like 50 times because of how confident my teammates are against them because we just keep beating them and destroying them. So it will probably be a Chinese team or G2. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Next question from... Be Valorant. Uh, my question is for both players, but particularly for Bustil. And you have shown your love to Shanghai on the X that we have seen your Twitter. And um, what is your favorite part of Shanghai or what impressed you the most? 
I mean, just arriving in the van, coming into the city, like downtown, we're, like wherever we're staying at, we can't say where we're staying at, but coming into it, the views were like something I've never seen. I've been to a couple big cities in the world, and I think it's like the most beautiful city I've ever seen, like architecture wise. Um, it's incredible. I mean, it reminds me of like New York, but it's just like clean. Like he says it a lot. He's from New York City. Yeah. And he says it reminds him of New York, but clean as well. Yeah. It's also a lot more like skyline just in general. Like in order to see New York City skyline, you have to be in the water. Or like Brooklyn. Um, but here you can just be in the city and you still see everything. It's a lot different. Um, obviously it's because Manhattan's like an island, but so Manhattan's like, you know, you see it like above you, but the skyline is like more everywhere. It's like 360 mm -hmm. and it's like more out. Um, a lot different. Also, I mean the buildings are some of them are way more taller, obviously. Yeah, they're huge. Uh it's like a spectacle, it's just yeah. fun to look at. Yeah. Um, we went to like a we can say the circle thing. It was really pretty like yeah, the tower. Uh yeah, we're yeah. gonna check out more things later yeah we haven't explored a crazy amount but it's just beautiful thank you next question from pedro hey guys uh well first off welcome back to to masters to both of you guys a pleasure to have you guys back in this stage uh got a question for Bustio, but also you can answer this if you if you would like uh, you know, of course, when one mentions yourself and China, of course, there's some story, some history uh, uh, within the, that combination going back into last year when you were in EG. You know, now that that you are in China and just are getting ready to to take part in this event, I just want to know just sort of what's your assessment of just the Chinese teams compared to how you kind of assessed it uh, from from last year? Yeah, I mean, I don't think my opinion changes much from last year. I think the Chinese teams are still definitely the weakest teams out of all the regions. I think it's like not even close. I think probably none will make it out of the Switch stage, and then EDG will be the only team left. I think out of all the teams remaining, EDG is probably bottom two, um, especially from the first seeds, the worst first seed out of all the regions. So I'd say overall, my opinions are still the same. Like, we should destroy them. Thank you. Next question from Azri Gosu Gamers. Hey, gentlemen, welcome to Shanghai. Just got a couple of questions for you. Um, seeing that you guys are now starting directly straight into the playoffs, how do you rate your team's chances for the rest of this tournament? And as a follow-up question to just now where you were just talking about how you found G2, probably the team that you want to pick, should they qualify for the next one? Is there any team that you don't want to face and you would like to just send home straight away right now if you're given the opportunity? You can answer the first question. Okay. What was the first question exactly? I forgot as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to question? ask you guys. Sure, no worries. I just wanted to ask you guys, like, since you guys are starting right at the playoffs, uh, how do you rate your team's chances of winning okay, the yeah, whole tournament? Yeah. And I'll answer the second one. You can go for it. Uh, winning the whole tournament. Obviously, it's not anything crazy because there's a lot of teams and, you know, whatnot. But definitely, like, we're not the favorites, I would say. I think Paper X definitely coming in are, um, like, in good form. The players are insane. And they bring back instead of Manya. Um, so, you know, they're probably the favorites, but I would say we're pretty, like, you know, top three at least in there. Mm -hmm. I definitely think we can win it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we will win it. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But I'm giving you the, you know, yeah. answer you want to hear. We are very confident um, after America's. But um, for the second part of the question, I would definitely not want to play probably Heretics or Lev. Um, to be honest, I'd much rather pick a G2 or a Chinese team if they make it. I think Heretics, even without Mini Boo, are very good still, a very good team. I think Lev, they have Aspas, hard carries that team. And if Aspas goes plus 30, then like, what are you going to do? It's kind of hard. So definitely not Lev, probably not Heretics, definitely G2. Yep. I'll say Gen G. Gen G is really scary as well. Yeah. Don't want to play Gen G. He didn't say them, but yeah, yeah I, I think Gen G is pretty good. So wouldn't want to play them, Yeah. Um, depending on you know what form they're in, obviously. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, gentlemen, and all the best. Thank you. You too. Next question from Nerditude. Hi, thank you. My question is for uh, both of you. Um, with the time zone changes and the jet lag from playing in China, uh, how have you been managed the effects or your performance and preparation for the matches? So how do we manage the expectations and performance of the match, right? Can no, you no. say it again? I, I, say it again. Okay, sorry. Uh, how have you been managed the effects 
on your performance and preparation for the matches, the effects of, of the jet lag. Oh, okay. Okay, I got okay. it. Yeah, yeah. I see. Um, right now we've been we still have another week to our game, so we're not as affected. But I think if we had the seven p.m. game tomorrow, we some of us would maybe be a little bit sleepy. I'm uh, yeah. For me, he's one hundred percent correct. I'm fine. I can sleep where like whenever. So like I literally went to bed at like twelve last night and woke up at like eleven today. I slept like eleven hours, so I'm good. I'd be able to play the late match. But yeah, some of my teammates woke up at like. I, I'm going to bed at like ten and waking up at eight right now, which is so, not good for a seven p.m. game. Which yeah, we so need to fix. I, I'd be sleepy at eight thirty. <laughs> So, you know, not good for me. And then for um, our performance that we're prepping for that, right now we're just like chilling, practicing, you know, yeah. fixing some small things that we want to, some maps here and there. But overall, we're not, I mean, we're going to change a lot of things. Um, but at the same time, we're, we know what's good and what's not. So we're yeah. just scrimming and getting back into um, form as in for our team play mainly. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're all individually confident. We believe that we're going to be the best individually. We just need to make sure that we're working together and then we'll be fine. Yeah. Thank you so much and good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Next question from Elizabeth, the score esports. Hi, guys. Um, I wanted to Hello. follow up on something. This is for anyone who wants to answer. It feels most comfortable answering it. Um, something that Benji Fishy brought up uh, that I want to ask you guys about is about the burnout of the schedule and how kind of brutal the schedule is. Mm -hmm. um, you are on the same path as Sentinels in Madrid. You, you know, won. They won kickoff, you won stage one. You are one of the favorites. In my opinion, I do believe you will win Shanghai. Is that a fear for you all? Or do you feel as if that what happened to Sentinels, the burnout, et cetera, will not happen to you? Um, I don't think so. I have a couple of reasons. I think the, maybe the biggest reason, I don't know. It's still a little weird that they just dropped off. I think that's pretty bad on their part. I don't know how they did that. But they did start like three or four months into the off season, like before the kickoff, which, you know, it, it paid out. They won Madrid good for them, but, um, you know, playing four months and then just going into a regular season, like they had no time off literally. So I think that's a big part of it. And then, um, I mean, they didn't play for that long though. Like it was only like six months they were playing. I don't think burnout should kick in yet because back in like 2022, 2021, like you got like, no, we got no, like no breaks. So it's, it's a little interesting. I think we will be good. My teammates are grinders. They've all been playing ranked. Like they, like we literally just play a lot of ranked, like all my teammates do. So like I don't see a world where we would burn out unless we would have to play for like I would burn out if I had to play for like nine or ten months straight. But it's, that's not going to happen. So I don't see a world where we burn out. I feel like they burned out. Uh, I don't know anything about them, obviously, as people yeah. or anything. But yeah. I feel like um, their burnout might be attributed to like streaming and stuff. I feel like they did that a lot as well on top of everything. If we just practice, though, I don't see any burnout really happening. Even if I played the entire year making every event going far. Um, yeah. Because, uh, like, uh, the biggest thing I faced last year, burnout-wise, was, like, you're scrimming and you're just not doing anything. Like, I I practiced for three months in between, like, uh, losing to my BR and then the send one game. Now that felt like burnout because... I just played three months of scrims for one BO3 and I lost, and it's just like devastating. Yeah. Um, I think that sucks the most. Uh, I would hate to be in someone's shoes where you don't even have the chance to compete in the international stage. Um, I don't think that, that feeling is way worse than whatever burnout could feel, in yeah. my opinion. So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And the final question will be from Ravish. Hi guys. Uh, so to end off on a bit of a lighthearted note, uh, also there's been the uh, consistent meme about you learning Chinese as it is, right? You've talked about it and you're finally in Shanghai. Uh, have you actually learned any Chinese yet? Um, I just know uh, words of affection to my girlfriend. That's about it. What about, we know thank you, right? Oh uh, yeah, shi shi. Uh, shi shi. And then, I mean, I, I know like, which means like, I love you wife. <laughs> that, that's, uh, I, uh, yeah i mean i know just like the, the words i need to know from my girlfriend's girlfriend. chinese yeah right? yeah my girlfriend's chinese so i, I just speak it to her yeah. and then that's about it <laughs> that's bad cute thank you appreciate it that was cute peter can i say that was cute i'll give it to you all right thank <clears> you very <throat> much that was the final question thank you boostio and asana and for our media we'll be back shortly oh,